A bill to write the government's 43% emissions reduction target into law has passed the lower house after the government agreed to several minor amendments from the crossbench. So what does this mean for business and industry? Joining me live is Tenant Reid, Principal National Advisor with the AI Group. Tenant, thank you so much for joining us. Does this now give the industry the it's certainty it needs? So this is a very important step. Uh, the agreed target uh, across a, a large swathe of the parliament gives a, a clear direction and sets the stage for the next piece of the journey, which is finalising a lot of policies to actually achieve this important goal. The process that's been set out is good. We've got a lot of work to do now, though, to get there. A long way to go. 43% is the current target. Would you like to see the government go further? Can they go even more ambitious here? Well, we are going to have to go further over time. So the goal that's uh, in this legislation is not just the 43% for 2030 and as much more as the government uh, winds up thinking we can achieve, but net zero by 2050. So we also have the next waypoint target for 2035 that has to be developed in this parliament uh, to put into the Paris Agreement process. The, these targets will keep getting deeper over time uh, and they're going to take a lot of work, not just in the electricity sector, where we've had the most debate to date, but in industry, the safeguard mechanism that is being reformed this year to start in July next year will be a very big deal, as will uh, the uh, funds in the National Reconstruction Fund for investment in clean industry across the country, from resources to manufacturing and more. Uh, the discussion about uh, the transportation system and how we start turning over uh, our car fleet at a great rate. So there's a lot to do. Uh, but having a clear steer on the direction, uh, at least for the next seven years, is helpful for industry, which will be making a lot of the investment needed to achieve these targets. Uh, we heard from the federal government today, it's announced it's now taking the first steps towards offshore wind production, uh, of course, after passing that reduction target yesterday. Do you believe that that will lower prices? So offshore wind has not been part of Eastern Australia's or, or Western Australia's energy system to date. It has become a very big deal in Europe in the North Sea and it's gotten cheaper much faster than expected there. So we have some hopes that it will turn out to be an important part of our local energy systems. Uh, but we are starting from square one there. We've, we do not have any offshore wind in the country yet. Uh, we uh, are going to need a lot of different uh, resources in our electricity system. Onshore wind, large-scale solar, distributed solar. Gas peakers are going to continue to play an important backup role, uh, as is uh, demand response, batteries, hydro, and the transmission lines to connect it all up. All of those things are important. Uh, there's not one size fits all in our electricity system. It is quite vast uh, and there's also been a lot of talk this week about gas supply. A report by the ACCC found that Australia could fall 10% short next year. The government has so far left the door open to pull that gas trigger. From an industry perspective, would you like to see that happen sooner rather than later? So the government does need to ensure that there is not absolute scarcity of gas uh, in this country. And the risks that the HLC have outlined are very concerning. And they are based on reassessing uh, the likely demand for gas in the power system. We've seen this winter a quarter of our coal fleet unavailable at the same time and much higher than expected reliance on gas, at great expense, I should add. Uh, they also expect that, given the uh, announced plans of the gas exporters and the demand overseas, uh, that those exporters will be selling any gas that they have uh, beyond their contracted levels to spot sales overseas. So it is a real risk. 
But we also need to be conscious that there is a global energy crisis, that our allies and trading partners are in a bad state themselves. And the less that we need to rely on export controls, the better. So that means we need to use gas more efficiently, accelerate steps to shift uh, energy users' uh, demand from gas to electricity, to biogas, to hydrogen in the longer term, uh, and that we will need to secure local gas production and ensure that is adequate as we reduce demand over time. The export controls are not a great solution. They are better than nothing. Tenant Reid, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you.